Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the warm uh, welcome here. Always great to be in Munich. I used to pass through the airport so many times, would never have time to stop and come and check out what else is happening here outside the airport. <clears throat> and it's fascinating. I would like to take you with me on a journey from a desert country 70, 80 years ago, moved on to a startup nation, and then today a scale up nation. What is the drive here? What's going on in this part of the region? One of the key elements that Israel is facing is the competition on innovation. If you look on the innovative countries, as Bloomberg put it together, you can see that South Korea is the first one and, the, uh, and the Singapore is the second one, Switzerland the third, Germany is the fourth, Israel startup nation is the seventh in, in innovation. So what take a small country, nine million people, to be the seventh on the innovation and how we're moving forward? So first, I think something moved on, okay. Uh, so first, we need to see that we, we need to uh, realize how much investment is coming into Israel and how much of this investment is going into R&D. As R&D percentage of GDP, Israel is number one, 5.4% of GDP is actually going to research and development. Korea, the third one, Sweden, you can see the average is 2.7. If you look at that number, that money that come to Israel, last year, 2021, or two years ago, or almost by now, $27 billion during the pandemic, when the world was kind of crashing and the government were pouring money to the economy, a lot of it made it up to Israel. But you can see the growth from 2014, 15, 16, all of that, not because of our friendly neighborhood, as you all know. All of that because of the innovation, because of the fast moving technology that Israel is committed and Israel is uh, providing to countries that investing in it. And you can see how the money goes. The blue one is in, is a, is a M&A, M &A, and the red one is meaning exit, the company being sold out, and the red one is a scaling up our IPO, meaning that we're going to more company from selling out to a foreigners or to uh, exit, they are actually continue to grow and continue to create value into Israel. What we see today in Israel that 54% of Israeli export is coming from the high-tech industry. 25.6 or 27 that you saw before, billion dollars were pouring into Israel by all investors from the fire department, uh, uh, fire de de department pension fund in California to different uh, communities that bringing money to Israel. Today, 15% of Israel GDP is actually from high tech. So 25% of the income, uh, 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 income tax coming from high tech. So innovation and and high tech is what leading Israel economy by, by far. Overall, Israel have about 3,000 investor, active investors, and we have about 10,000 uh, uh, active companies in, in, uh, in the high tech. We have more than 400, almost 400, uh, almost uh, 450 and 78 actually here, of multinational companies in Israel. Every major multinational company in, in the world, in the Silicon Valley, is having research and development, research development engineering, research development engineering and manufacturing in Israel today. Why? Why they are all coming? They're coming because of ecosystem that was created in Israel. 
what created this ecosystem, very unique ecosystem? Necessity. Necessity is what Albert Einstein said many years ago, that necessity is the mother of all invention. And what is the necessity of Israel? Well, look at our neighborhood. From Morocco to the, to the West, Libya, Egypt, Iraq, Iran, you know what the common thread in all this area, right? Look where Israel is. That's define necessity. You are in friendly neighborhood, which become now not sarcastic, more and more friendly with Abraham Accord, the all environment, but this was only two years ago. The old change of Israel moving into, into innovation and, and the economy that driven by innovation started many years ago, as I'm going to show you. But as you see here, Israel is in a place where necessity driving our need. That brings a lot of out-of-the-box thinking. If you want to break something into the market, you need to do something that other people don't know how to do or don't even know that need to be done. And you need to think outside of many, many different other people. So necessity. And then the whole ecosystem. What you see in this circle is Israel ecosystem where the government need to lead. The government should not define the private market, the private sector need to operate, but the government should enable it. And I hope that will continue. Then you need a strong academia. You need multinational companies. You need private fund. You need growth com uh, companies. You need startup. And in Israel, we need also the defense force. I don't want to go through this all, every sector and sector, but this ecosystem created a very unique situation in Israel. And if we start this, this uh, trip from 1896, for some of you who know in Zionism, that's Herzl, that was a, a vision, the Israel, many, many years ago before Israel was established. And then Israel started to attract because of a talent of few people, Motorola, um, IBM, Intel, and that was the R&D stage. Most of them, all of them came because of research and development. And then you can see the Israel, uh, you see uh, the, the uh, startup nation, and you can see ICQ, where is Yossi, Waze, Google. 2016, Israel Innovation was established. I am the chairman of Israel Innovation Authority, which is the government arm that invests in research and development, and I will elaborate on that a bit more. So, how we do that, uh, if you look, the chief scientist position, which I'm the chief scientist and chairman, it was established in 1971, 52 years ago. Through those years, many milestones of research and development, Yozma is a VC, the government actually backed up with secure money for VC to start operating and investing in the research and development. That's money of Yozma, $125 million only the government secure. We have today more than 400 active funds in Israel. We have now in the uh, nano program, government put 93 million only. Today, more than 200 nano companies. The government put um, money in the, in the um, uh, smart transportation, 25 million. Today, more than 500 companies raise more $1.5 billion. The government put the seed and the private sector take it uh, further. So Israel Innovation Authority, the mission that the, of the OMI organization is to promote technological innovation as leverage for inclusive and sustainable and economical growth. Inclusive and sustainable, inclusive of all population in Israel. Israeli Arab, women that are in very short, uh, in, uh, in, in, the, uh, uh, in the high tech industry. We need to provide environment for more women to work in the high tech industry. And sustainability to be today and to be in the future. So the government should enable, the government should not control. 
The way we operate, our principle, is we stay as a government. Listen to that. Listen. We stay neutral as a government. We let entrepreneur, we let the innovators to come to us, bottom up, and we will fund them. How we will fund them? We'll fund them only if they are willing to take a risk. We will go with them. Disruptive technology, that's what we are looking. Disruptive technology is that most CEO in company will not invest. We, government, willing to risk, but everyone knows. You see, I grew up on a kibbutz. On a kibbutz is, you know, it's a kind of the old communism, the beautiful of communism. But it's all belong to everyone. You know what it means? Money is cheap because it belongs to the government. Who cares? So we learned the lesson. And we said, we government put 50%, you, the investor, the entrepreneur, you put your 50%. Now we're willing to go with you. And they go. And 50-50, that's how we, how we go. So Israel Innovation Authority, we are distributing every year 500 million. You already know that 500 million is a matching match by the private sector, so it's more than a billion. And we have additional money from the European Union. And we see, I see, as a chairman of all the investment uh, committee, more than 2,000 applications every year of amazing technology, amazing. And we investing in three pillars. One is in today economy, second future, and third enabling. And I have less than a minute, I hope to finish all of them. Investing in R&D, so, we look from ideation to seed, to incubator, to pilot, to R&D in manufacturing, even international program. We invest money in all of those. We then move on, we have incubators, so company can come and get support by professional, by uh, financial and business development, so they can go from one-man show into set up a company. I will skip the, this one. We also looking for, for, for future technologies. In future technologies, we have a groundbreaking technology in the academia. We have more than 15 different consortia, consortia that you can see here, agriculture, genomic, the CRISPR, for those of you who know what CRISPR is, and all those consortia is academia, industry, possible also foreign companies. The four speci uh, specific future waves of technology that we see is quantum, artificial intelligence, bioconvergence, biology and engineering, and climate tech. We are committed, in that case, for future waves. We, as a government, say that's the direction we want to go, but every entrepreneur can come to us in all, every, any other field that they want. And the last and not least, I will not have time for my video, but we are enabling, putting together reg regulator, industry, and the environment in project for drones, project for autonomous public transportation. You come in 2024 to Israel, you will be able on few buses to go, still driver, but it will go autonomically, and volumetric modular construction. So I have to end up, I will skip the last and not least, we are open to collaboration on many different fields with many different countries, different, we have more than 70 binational agreement, and we're looking forward because we know that in order to succeed, in order to make the world a better place to live, we need to collaborate with everyone. Thank you very much.